Hey, I'm Professor Kobe, and today I want to chat with you about discussion board netiquette. Since we talked about netiquette last week when it comes to Zoom, conferencing, or being a part of your online digital classes live, this week I thought it would be helpful to give you a couple of tips as you work on your online discussion boards. If you're finding these videos and tips helpful as you navigate becoming an online student practically overnight, as so much of our education is becoming distance education, please subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Okay, so let's get started with five things to remember for your online discussion boards. Number one is to be mindful of your tone. Now, first thing you need to realize is that your discussion boards, they're not like Reddit or Twitter. So as you're writing in there, be very mindful of how you're communicating. Your teacher is very likely from a different generation than you are. And even if they're closer in age, maybe one generation away like me, we're still digital migrants, meaning we're not native to communicating. We didn't grow up with that digital world just like a lot of our students have. Ultimately, just remember that this is an academic forum and your communication should be reflective of that. The way you write should show that. Your friends may not judge you when you text them the wrong there, but I'm gonna judge you. As much as you may hate it, now is the time to actually be politically correct in your discussion boards. Now, some of you really love to play the devil's advocate and you might just be exploring the other side. Unless that's exactly what the directions tell you to do, I don't need you stirring the pot in a discussion board. A classroom, whether it's a physical classroom or an online classroom, is an environment for academic discourse, for making progress on these conversations and these ideas in an academic setting that allows for everyone to learn and potentially contribute to. I want to encourage you to think about this from the teacher's perspective. We want to create an environment where all students can learn. And if someone is coming in with an aggressive tone or attacking another person, it's really hard to learn. If you're in that fight or flight moment, if you feel like you're being attacked or someone is coming off incredibly strong and opinionated, then it's really hard to open up, relax, and actually learn something. So as a teacher, I really prefer if students are mindful of how they're communicating. It can be easy to come off as aggressive when you're just maybe curious. So there are a couple things you can do to actually check your tone and see if it'll be able to come off as something for an academic conversation in the discussion board. First, I actually recommend reading it out loud. Read what you have drafted up or have someone else read it. See how the tone sounds when allowed. Then also try to give it a read with a little bit of a sassy or kind of pissed off attitude, just a little bit to see if it could actually be interpreted that way. You can also take a look at some of the specific word choices or the way you phrased some of your comments. For instance, if you have written, the author would never say that in response to a discussion board prompt, you can see how that's very limiting. That's very black and white thinking to say they would never think that. Instead, use support, use evidence in a little bit more of an open mindset and tone. So perhaps if you want to disagree, you would look at the prompt and say, I don't think that the author would consider that. And the reason I don't think that is because on paragraph three, she states this. So using that support, using that evidence, and using a gentler, calmer tone than maybe you would face to face will help ensure that others can continue that conversation. And just avoid sarcasm, like, sorry. I can do it here on the camera. You see my face, you hear my tone, you know the body language, perhaps you've watched my other videos or you have me as a student and you kind of know my general demeanor. In the online environment, it's way harder to read sarcasm, right? You've probably gotten mixed up in a text or conversation digitally that was not sarcastic, but was interpreted as such. So just don't use sarcasm, please. Tip number two, follow directions. It seems super straightforward. And if you watch my other videos, you know I say this like all the time, just follow the directions. I always encourage you to print it out, print out the discussion board directions or copy paste them into another document or handwrite them with your really pretty glitter pens. Whatever you're doing to transfer the directions to somewhere else than where they're actually typed on the computer, it's gonna help you to make sure you're hitting all of the points. For my discussion boards, I have no more than one a week in my classes. However, there are a lot of moving parts. There are often required readings, prep, and questions that students need to first respond to in order to get the discussion going. So it's important to make sure you're following each step to 
maximize the points you're gonna get. Tip number three is another duh, it's avoid procrastination. I really encourage you to look at the deadlines and try to schedule your life, your work, your home, your other classes so that you can finish the work for each class ahead of the deadlines. If you're just rushing to finish it, you're not gonna have time to check your tone, to proofread, et cetera. Also, one of the things about online classes that isn't as common when you turn things into a physical class is we can see the exact moment you finished. As a teacher, I see it, I think about it. So if you're submitting something just before the deadline, I know you weren't as involved in the rigorous conversation, in that discussion, you weren't engaged in going back and forth. I get sometimes life means you scheduled out that time just before the deadline and that's when you're gonna do it. That's fine, but do know we can see. And by getting involved in the discussion earlier before the end, you really are contributing to good, solid academic discourse, regardless if it's in person or in the online forum. That leads to my fourth point, which is to please remember to discuss. Add something of substance. Respond when students post to your responses. Get in there, get engaged. Think about the physical classroom environment. If you've had a really solid discussion, whether it's with the teacher at the front, if it's in the midst of lecture and something organic really happens that everyone's enjoying talking about or you've done a formal Socratic seminar, those conversations, those discussions in a classroom environment that are really engaging, that really have people buying into them, those move so much faster. Those are much more enriching than people who are responding with very rote or kind of fluff responses of, yes, I agree, thank you for a great post. What value is that? That's not real conversation. That You might as well just have like a sticker, good job. Okay, my fifth tip may seem a little odd for a discussion board, but I highly recommend you proofread. By spending a little bit of extra time at the very end, you can go through and make sure it doesn't sound like a giant rant, right? This is how you make sure you're not some random Reddit thread in your academic discussion board. If it's too long or too short, if it's too personal or too vague, this is the opportunity to check yourself. Perhaps consider composing in a different place. So maybe open a Google Doc and put the directions in there and then type your response there. So you're not tempted to immediately submit if you're typing right in the submission box. And it'll give you a little extra time to review, check your tone, follow all the other tips that I've given, and then you can copy and paste it in before you submit. I wanna add one more thing before I sign off and that is to consider being innovative. If you have a teacher who's fun or a subject that's pretty open, consider adding some really fun graphics, text, links, or a TED Talk, anything relevant that might help continue to engage your classmates. As a teacher in my English classes, I really like when students will add an appropriate image or further information than was just asked for in the discussion prompts, because then it keeps the other students interested and it allows the others to get some more information than from just me. Now remember, you're not an expert, so you're not trying to teach anything. I'm not telling you to be the educator in these. I am encouraging you to discuss. But if you can make it playful, we love that. And if I love it, I'm always in a good mood when I'm grading. I did have a student in one of my literature classes a few years ago who was really into making memes for the class in the discussion boards and the students loved it. She was really clever, uh, never offensive or sarcastic like we've talked about in the earlier tips. But what she would do, she would tie in the characters for some of the stories we were reading with the content, with the analysis we were doing, and she came up with really clever memes through the semester. I don't recommend doing this on your first or second discussion board post. Make sure you feel out the class environment and understand your teacher before you get aggressive in churning out memes, but it's okay to think a little bit outside the box if the classroom environment seems to lend itself to it because that way you'll have more fun in your discussions as will your teacher. All right, so those are my five things I want you to remember as you are working on your discussion boards, improving your discussion board netiquette in your online classes. Be kind to yourself and others, not just in the discussion board. If you find this video helpful and want some more content like it, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and regardless, smash the like button for me. Take care.